Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Shah Weekly. In this multi-part series, we will be building the Apple Stocks application, but in Flutter. So this application that you see in front of you is actually created using the Flutter framework, using the Dart language, and we're going to be creating this. Now, currently this application displays all the data, which is hard-coded dummy data, but what we will do is we will actually eventually get to a point where we can actually fetch the data from web API and then display it. It's a long way till we get there, but in the first video, I would at least like to set up some sort of a user interface that looks similar to this with some hard-coded data. So you can see it's all hard-coded data and we can display a list of all these stocks, all this data, it's obviously fake. You can't really search or do anything right now. And we have a business news also, so you can pull it up just like an Apple news you can pull up. You can pull up the business news and all of this news is obviously fake data. It's all repeating all the time, but the UI works perfectly fine. And you can swipe up, swipe down, and it will go back to its original state. Great. So this is what we'll be building uh, throughout our journey. And we will eventually get to a point where we can use an actual web API. and We will consume that web API from Flutter and display the information from a JSON web API. But to just get started, it will be fine to use some sort of a hard-coded data like this and then simply display into the UI. So let's see how we can do that in these videos. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm using Visual Studio Code, but obviously you can use any editor that you want. Let's go ahead and create our first Flutter application. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select Flutter New Project. That's fine. The name of the project, we can call it Stocks App in Flutter. Perfect. And the location desktop is fine for now. So let's go ahead and get it created. Perfect. All right, it's gonna go through all of these things to create kind of like the baseline, the boilerplate code for our Flutter application. It's still working, I guess. Now, the reason it is a little bit slow, as you can see, is that there's some sort of a background process is also running something else. So for you, it will be much faster than what you see on my machine, hopefully. And once it is done, we should be able to run the simulator. Great. So that part is now done. And whenever this create iOS, language, Swift, and Android, Kotlin, and all that is done, we should be able to run the app. Now, right now you can see it's not really working, so we'll have to wait for it to be done. I think that's it, it's done. And now I can run it on the iOS simulator. Now, obviously this application is not what we have right now. Right now we have the basic Flutter application, which will be a simple counter and it's going to run on our iPhone 11. Now you can obviously run this application on Android devices also, but since the Apple Stocks is the Apple iOS application, I'm simply going to be using the Apple iOS 11 simulator or the iPhone 7 simulator, but you can use anything that you want. So let's go ahead and run our application. The first time you run, you're gonna see that it's a little bit slow and all the subsequent times it will be fine since the app will be running hopefully and not crashing. So we'll come back to it once we can get the app running. All right, so here you can see the app is running. It's a simple counter application, which is a default application. And I don't really need this application at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with creating my own class called app. Let me go ahead and delete all of this code. And let's start with creating app class, which is going to extend a state list widget for now. The only function that I really need to implement, the required is the build function. So there we go, the build function. And it must return, well, some sort of a widget, so which we don't have right now. So let's go ahead and return a material app. And in this material app, we can actually provide some sort of a title which can be stocks, that's fine. And then the home, which is the, the main, basically the widget that will be displayed, our homepage. 
the first widget that gets displayed, which is home, which doesn't exist by the way. So let's go ahead and add a brand new folder over here. We'll call it widgets. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new file, homepage.dart. And now I can go ahead and create this stateless widget. So this will be a stateless widget. It's going to be called homepage. We don't need that for now. And it is not going to return a container. It's going to return a text. Actually, I shouldn't even be returning text. But let's go ahead and return homepage just to see that if it's even working or not. We will need to import material. That is fine. And we will need to import home page over here. So there we go. Save it. And let's go ahead and run this or do a hot reset. So we can definitely see the home page, but obviously it's text without any scaffolding. So we must go and create some sort of a scaffolding for this page. So let's go back to our home page. Over here, we are using simply returning the text. Now we will can go ahead and say we're going to return scaffolding with the app bar. But in this case, we don't really need an app bar because the stock application doesn't really have an app bar. So we can just start with the body. And in the body, I'm just going to use a stack and provide some sort of a children. All right, there we go. All right, so what kind of a children do we need in our stack? Well, the first thing that we need is to display some sort of a title. It will be nice if we have the vision for what we are building. So let me show you what we are actually about to build. So moving to this screen, you can see that it starts with the title stocks, then we have the date. And right now we're just hard coding it and later on we can replace it with the actual data coming from JSON API that I mentioned previously. Then we have a search box and then we have a list of all the stocks, which is all fake. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to start with creating the stack, which we already have now. Uh, there are multiple ways of going across that, like we can do whatever we want. I mean, there are many different ways of accomplishing this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a container and set the padding with edge insets all the sides with 10. I also want the width of my container to be the complete width of the whole thing. So media query dot off and it will be context dot size dot width. This is not the only way to do this, by the way, right? I mean, there are infinite number of ways that you can build this thing. So now you can see that everything in my simulator is dark is black, which is good because in actual screenshot, you can see everything is actually also black. That's good. All right, so we have the color. Now we can actually go ahead and create a child. And the child that I'm trying to create is a column which will have children. The first chill child that I want to add is a text, which is stocks. All right. So it might actually be displaying over there, but the problem is that the text by default is black. So black on black is not going to display. So let's go ahead and add the style. We'll say text style. And we will go ahead to go to color. And we will go ahead and say colors.white. And still I don't really see it's getting displayed. Okay, we'll, we'll eventually get it hopefully. Okay, so we have the text style. And what else we can do? We have white. We can do a font size, which is 36. Okay, there we go. We can start seeing it now. And let's go ahead and say font weight, which can be font weight dot bold. And now I would like to a little bit format my document so I can right click and say format document and it looks much nicer. Now, obviously, you can see the initial problem is that the stocks is right on the top. It's cutting off. So I need to fix that part. And I also needed to align my column to the start. So inside the column, not inside the children, but inside the column, there is a property called cross axis alignment. So this means the horizontal alignment. 
and I'm going to say cross access alignment to be start. So there we go, it's on the start, which kind of is similar to this one. But we also want to make sure that we are not messing around with the safe area. The safe area is this part on the top, which is a problem. So the good thing is that I can simply go ahead and right click on the column and I can say refactor and I can say wrap with a widget and that widget will be safe area. And as soon as I do that, you can see that it kind of arranges itself and starts below the safe area. So that's good. Let's go ahead and format the document again. Great. All right, so we are done with the first part, which is displaying the stocks. Now we need to display another label, which is saying December the 3rd, or, well, you can say any date you want. It's all hard-coded for now. Okay, so we'll start from over here, and I think we are outside of this. Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell where you are, right? All right, so I'm gonna say, what is the date today? Let's find out the date today, which is January the 5th. All right, and I also want to define the style. Style is text style, and text style, I will say color, which can be colors.white. There we go, so we got the date. Um, but I don't think the date is white. If you see, the date is more of a gray color. So what we can do is we can use a shade of a gray color. Let's say 500. Perfect, that's fine. The next step we want to do is the font size. So the font size we're gonna set is 30. And font weight, you can also set to be a font weight to be bold. Perfect. Now we can go ahead and also say format document. There we go, formatted, great. So we're on a good start. We got these two things. The next up is the actual search bar, which doesn't really work right now, but that's fine, we can change it later. All right, so we need to figure out how to create that kind of a bar. All right, so here we go. And we are going to start with a size box, sized box. So size box is something that can be sized. So we can give a height for the size box to be 50. And the child of the size box is a text field control or a view or a widget. Decoration will be input decoration. And now we can decorate over here the actual text field by giving it some sort of a hint style. And the text style that we want to give it will be color and colors.gray with, let's say 500 is fine, I guess. It doesn't really appear right now. Let's give it a hint text, which is search. Okay, we got the search, that's great. We are on, on the correct path. The prefix, that's something that will appear before the search, can be an icon, and the icon will be of the search icon. I don't know what happened over there. So it should be icons.search. Okay, it does appear, but I guess it's, uh, it's not colored out right now. So let's go ahead and do a fill color, and then say colors.gray, and then once again, we're gonna use 800. Okay, nothing really happened right now. Okay, let's go ahead and give it a border. We will say it will be an outline border or outline input border. And now we can say border side, not size, side. And the border side will be an instance of border side. And over here we can define the width and the style. So the width of the border is zero and the style of the border is border style style where's the style style dot none and now we can go and see how it looks okay it's a little bit arranged it doesn't really look that much but we also need to say if the we are providing the fill color we also need to provide that the fill is true or not so let's go ahead and do that there we go great getting close getting really close Okay, 
So border side is fine. I think the next one we can provide is the border radius, which is border radius dot all. On all the sides, we can provide radius dot circular radius of, we can check out different things, but 16 is fine. You can see it is perfectly fine. Now it's a little bit too much stick sticking to the January 5th date. So what we can do is I can right click on it and I can simply go ahead and say uh, refactor and I can say wrap it up with padding. And you can see that now it's a little bit nicer, a little bit of a gap over here. Uh, not exactly the same because I think this one has a little bit more on the padding on the top. Uh, you can see it's a little bit padding on the top, but not over here. Right now we are applying the padding on all the size eight padding. You can actually use edge insets only. And if you only want to apply the padding, you can say eight and now it looks much nicer, right? Because the padding is only on the top now instead of all the sides. Great, so we have done with this part. Now this comes in, the actual list, all right? And that is something that I want to cover in the next lecture, in the next video, all right? So stay tuned for that. We are still gonna use the hard-coded data. We don't worry about JSON right now. First, let's see that if we can create the interface using the hard-coded dummy data. And then once we're done with that, then we can look into, okay, JSON API, making it more of a real app. So we can check that out later on. Don't worry too much about that, but I will cover all of that as the series progresses, all right? Now, if you want to learn more about Flutter development, then maybe you'll be interested in checking out my course on Flutter and Dart, building apps using MVVM design pattern. This is a intermediate level course, which teaches you about Flutter and creating real world applications using the MVVM design pattern. And this is around nine and plus hours course, and I keep on updating new material to the course. You can see that it starts by covering the MVVM design pattern. Next up, you dive into learning about a news application by getting the data from an actual news source, live news. Then you're gonna dive into Place Finder application where you will integrate with uh, Google Maps and Google Places. So you can find near restaurants of coffee and all that stuff. And then this is a really fun app, the City Care app. This is the app where you can take a picture of a broken traffic light or a pothole and you can write some comments and it's going to upload the picture to a custom server. Wow, that, that is, that's just amazing. It will upload the picture that you have taken from the Flutter app, it will upload it to a custom server. And I'll also give you the code for the custom server. And then finally, you get into the Hacker News, you build the complete Hacker News clone. And I also have added a couple of source code for Apple Stocks app, Apple Weather app, Apple News app, Apple Store app. So a lot of different codes that I've added at the end. So you can download the code and, you know, play around with it. Now, in order to get this course, the best way to get this course is to check out the link in the YouTube description. There's a referral link for my Flutter and Dart course, but also all the other courses. And the best way to get this course is to use that link. Please use that link because it will be, you'll be very generous towards me because uh, I keep to get a little bit more revenue if you use my link and you will get the best deal. All right, and thank you so much. And if you do have any questions, let me know. And uh, I will be updating, adding new videos about finishing up our apps. So stay tuned for that. So thank you so much.